So I remember it was said would be a union that would not be around come Christmas. And do you know what? We're celebrating our 50 year anniversary. Initially, I was a hospital nurse. At Kaiser Sunset, that's where I came from, Kaiser Sunset. As a nurse in those days, you worked hard and you worked long. Very often you got no overtime pay and you didn't even seem to be appreciated by management. Oh, the Alliance of Healthcare Unions asked me. I remember when we started all this. Yep, me and Kathy. Madam Speaker, I rise in memory of Kathy J. Sackman, a pioneer in the labor movement, as well as a registered nurse and founder of the United Nurses Associations of California Union of Healthcare Professionals. And she was a nurse's nurse. She was a frontline nurse who worked in critical care units that saw that the diverse treatment and the adverse treatment of nurses led to worse outcome for patients. I was working at Fontana full time. Um, everybody else in the hospital was organized except the registered nurses. We had some really heavy patient loads. The first thing that happened was the other union went on strike. The directors called the nurses at six in the morning and told us we had to come to work immediately. We had to plan to be there 12 hours. We had to bring our meals. And if we didn't do that, we just didn't need to come to work. We were fired. The strike was then settled. They got a dental plan. And the LVNs were telling us that they had something in their, this new contract that told them that they could only handle five patients. I went to HR and asked them about a dental plan. And they told us that the nurses made too much money. The hospital and clinic where I worked, the non-professional employees were organized by SEIU. I felt that we were like second-class citizens, and yet we were the professionals that were really taking care of the patients. And so that's why we decided we better organize into a union like the other employees were. Hospitals were not organized at that time. In 1971 and 72, acute care hospitals were almost all nonprofit, and they were not covered by the National Labor Relations Act. So therefore, we had no rights to have a union. And the only way you could get a union was if the employer at that time agreed to an election. Before nurses had the right to join unions, when women's lives were very different, we were really treated as second-class citizens. We couldn't open a line of credit in our own name. As a group of women, we founded the United Nurses Associations of California, or as we now know as UNAC. In our first decade, we had eight affiliates that had joined and had already signed their first contracts. It didn't take long to convince them that, oh yeah, we have a right to do this and we have a right to be recognized by the company. In 1977, UNAC UHCP was the first Southern California nurses organization to go on strike with 800 nurses at four Kaiser hospitals and clinics. Kaiser was so sure that we didn't know what we were doing because we were also women that they could do whatever they wanted to and they tried since they kept us out for almost 30 days. The Kaiser negotiators didn't really know that much about actual hospital settings and what we had to go through as nurses. One of the 
best things that we negotiated and won in 1977 was every other weekend off, which the nurses continue to enjoy today. I became employed with UNAC UHCP March 7th, 1978. The technology, I remember we had a Sheshar machine which were data cards to process our membership. I commend and respect the leadership highly. The tenacity and the dedication that they had, they were the backbone. They had strength that no other, to me, anyone else had. It was always stress. We're doing this for the membership. Kathy and Sonia were negotiators. They were staff reps. They were organizers. They never gave up. UNAF became very strong in the labor community. And we were small in number, but we were small. So in the 80s, Members voted for the union to represent all healthcare professionals. We also expanded to San Diego and four affiliates signed their first contract. Physicians assistants joined us for the first time. We organized the nurses at St. Francis Medical Center. The company really challenged us. It went all the way up through the courts. We won it 10 years later. Some of the best changes that I will always cherish and remember when UNAC and UHCP merged with Nucci Labor Union. Level 99P and Ask Me can make the difference. And then later with Ask Me, we had more access to resources because Ask Me and Nucci were larger. We were more involved in the political aspect. Our state officers, some members, go to Sacramento or Washington, D.C. So in the 90s, five new affiliates signed their first contracts. Yesterday, we sent a letter asking for recognition to the administrator of the at the time, the Sharp Nurses Bargaining Unit was the largest single bargaining unit of registered nurses to vote for a union in, in the history of labor. We won by a margin of four to one. In the 90s, we decided to add the UHCP, Union of Healthcare Professionals, to our name. Then while we grew, we also encountered a new set of challenges. 1995. Kaiser was having a really, really difficult time. And for the first time since 1971, they came in and tried to get our complete contract. I was staff rep for Kaiser Wooden Hills. We voted to strike. We did not accept the contract. And so we went, I believe, six months without a, a contract. All the unions um, in the mid-90s were um, struggling with the company. Uh, there, there were strikes, there were concessions. It was just ugly. And the company made it very clear. They were gonna do it or else they were gonna sell most of their hospitals. By that time, we were affiliated with the AFL-CIO. We were affiliated with AFSCME. We started having a series of meetings with all the other unions. First of all, the local unions at Kaiser really never worked together rarely spoke to each other. We were pushing a coalition for one of two reasons. To either take Kaiser on and really go to war as a group, or to see if there was something we could do together. Peter had this vision, instead of going to war with the company, why don't we try to work with the company? I was not for it. And Kathy Sagman looked at me, she said, we're gonna let the members decide. And it overwhelmingly passed, it ratified big time. Members wanted stability. Okay, when we ratified that first national agreement, it was truly historic. 
The agreement included really good pay increases and some benefit improvements and secured the pension plan. But I would say two thirds of the book was really about how managers and employees were going to work together. Staffing levels, resources were jointly decided and not simply decided by management. By the time we ratified it and then bargained our first contract in 2000, I became a believer. We got back everything we'd lost in 95. I saw the, the promises and the commitments to give people a voice in the workplace. I'm still a believer in it today. Do I have the same kumbaya kind of uh, feeling about it? No. But no one had negotiated with a quote unquote single company that covered 60,000 employees across, you know, 14 states. In the 2000s, five affiliates signed new contracts. Physicians assistants joined us. We won key policy changes. Our political impact grew. According to a new law, the state has to decide how many patients a nurse will care for at one time. Now, nursing groups say it's outrageous that hospitals are pushing for a ratio of one nurse for 12 patients in the same ward. For me as a nurse, the staffing ratio, and as I look back on all my time working in a labor world, that is clearly the most monumental victory we've had. It's not a perfect fix by any chance but the data does show it makes a significant difference. We won even better than that within the Kaisers where we had a, a collective bargaining agreement. In the 2010s, we grew from 20,000 workers to represent 32,000 workers. We began to represent many other professions. For the first time, we represent professionals outside of California, and we continue to fight to protect our members. Emergency room nurse Elizabeth Hawkins is talking about the hazards of her job. I want to make sure that I'm coming home to my family every night, that the other nurses are going home to their family. All the work that we did with Cal OSHA was to put reporting systems in place and create a culture to prevent this from happening. And in 2016, we negotiated again with Sharp Healthcare. Literally at eight o'clock on a Sunday night when we were going to go on strike at seven o'clock the next morning, we got union securities wage increases that were unheard of. In the 2020s, our members face the unimaginable. Coronavirus cases are rising at a rapid rate across the county. We're also seeing fairly significant increases in our number of hospitalizations as we've had a doubling of COVID-related hospitalizations. We want help. We're tired. We're burning out. And, and it feels like there's no relief there. At some of our hardest hit hospitals, if you didn't see it, you wouldn't believe it. And we reported back to management at one of our healthcare systems and we were able to come together and get things fixed. We organize PPE supplies for our members. We also pivot to virtual events and bargaining. In Hawaii, one of our newest chapters bargained their contract virtually. So some of the specific things we wanted to address in the contract mostly was wages. Here in Hawaii, we don't have any patient to staff ratios, so another big thing was trying to get committees into place. I came from Lakewood, which is a smaller hospital uh, with 150 beds. Thereafter, I went to Sharp that has five hospitals with 5,000 RNs. For every hospital, there's always issues and concern. How to improve on things, identify the problem. That is now in place in Labor Management Committee. Another thing too, because we are wall-to-wall -wall and we cover the nurses and the rest of the hospital was getting language into the contract about floating. So we were able to get the committee language in our contract. We were able to get improved floating language into our contract as well as improved wages for 
for all of our members. Being healthcare professionals ourselves, we understand many more of the issues where we can drive a bit deeper. The employer wasn't used to that. While facing the challenges of the pandemic, healthcare workers continue to organize for a stronger voice. For the first time, UNAC UHCP represents workers in Northern California. What a win. In 2022, we negotiate another historic contract with Sharp Healthcare. So nearly 5,000 local nurses voted in favor of the new contracts. Now their base pay will jump an extra 15 to $20 an hour over the next two years. The turnover rate last year climbed to nearly 17%. So the union says bringing pay to market rate will allow the hospitals to recruit and retain their hard workers. They say the new contract also improves working conditions. So you, the patient, may also notice a change. It was a very rocky negotiation at first, um, but we did get incredible gains. You know, no contract is perfect, but this one is the best one we've ever had. The employer understood in that situation very clearly the power of UNAC UHCP. People have job security like they've never had before. And we think about job security absolutely as protecting ourselves against an employer that's being abusive but it's an absolute patient care issue. The last thing we want in our healthcare industry is a healthcare professional workforce that does not feel like it can fully give voice to the problems that they see. That the employer should want a workforce that's free and feels free to talk and speaks up against things that they see as problematic. And so when I look at that spin settlement, Yes, the wage gains were tremendous, but I also see it holding up the profession in a way that is not readily apparent, but if you go a little deeper, it's fundamental. That membership power programmatically came to play in Kaiser Permanente. To those of you who fight to deliver, providing extraordinary care, to every patient, every time. I say to you, stay with us. One of the major sticking points right now, according to the union, is a proposal by administration to start a two-tier pay system. Basically, the union says all current nurses would be paid at one rate with all future nurses at a rate more than 25% lower. I can't imagine doing the same work alongside somebody who is making you know, significantly more than me. They tried to divide us. They stonewalled us in negotiation, refusing to discuss any issue until we agreed to their demand to sell out the next generation of healthcare workers. All while they were enjoying billions of dollars in profit during the pandemic. We voted to authorize a strike. And at the 11th hour, with our picket signs and speeches at the ready, Kaiser wavered. There is no two-tier wage system at Kaiser today. Significantly for the pharmacists here in Hawaii was that uh, the salary bump. You know, when, when UNAC really worked hard to be able to get us to be um, more on par with the community. I just want to say thank you to all the members in California because it really meant a lot to us. Um, knowing that you guys wouldn't sign your contracts until we were able to sign ours. It just meant so much because we're like, we're 90, you know, like you guys are thousands. And to have your support and knowing that we mattered it meant all the difference in the world. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you. We talk a lot in the union about the power of the membership. We have built that into actual program with our membership matters approach. And when you take that service approach to your community, your power is multiplied because you're passionate about your ability to not only take care of yourself and your family, very important, but you're also deeply passionate 
about the community you live in and the profession you chose. And so when you're in collective bargaining, you can expand that discussion and you can utilize the passions of the membership and the involvement of the membership. And that way, it brings a lot, a, well, a significant, significant amount of pressure to bear on the employer. We are a strong union. Whether we're in partnership with Kaiser Permanente, whether we're in a more traditional fight with Kaiser Permanente, or we're in, we're in more traditional fights with our independent unions. I have a lot of pride in seeing UNAC UHCP's power and influence grow, especially in making a difference in the communities that we serve. And I'm so proud that we've created a scholarship fund to support future nurses and other healthcare professionals. I think UNAC is special and unique we were never afraid to stand alone when we had to stand alone. And so that takes a lot of courage. When UNAC UHCP joined AFSME, it was a small but mighty union. Employers have learned not to underestimate your resolve, your power, your solidarity. You've proven time and time again over half a century that when we fight the good fight, we win. UNAC UHCP is a powerful member of our AFSCME family, pushing our union and the entire labor movement forward. We're proud of what you've built and how far you've come over 50 years, and we look forward to at least 50 more. It just amazes me that management takes on the folks that does the primary care for their, their patients, which is their business looking to decrease scope of practice, looking to erode skill sets. All of those things are on the chopping block. When the for-profit systems decide their shareholders need more money. What makes UNAC UHCP different is that we are an organization built upon healthcare professionals um, representing healthcare professionals. You've got to go to the frontline workers to ask what patients want. People that have never walked inside a patient's room or held their hand. If you've never had to fight with a doctor over getting care for a patient, you really can't speak for the profession. You need somebody that fundamentally understands operations and what the nurses and those that deliver healthcare, and there's many of us, look at all the different entities we represent and they all contribute to the conversation. They all contribute to the understanding of what families want, patients deserve, and what is safe, fundamental good practice. You know, since our beginning in 1972, with 117 members and $250.99 in the bank, we at UNAC UHCP have worked to build a better workplace and a healthier world. Uniting nurses and other healthcare professionals, and we continue to do this today because we believe everyone deserves a chance to live a full, happy life.